Hello everyone and welcome. Today we will be talking about one of the most important topics when it comes to lung diseases, and that is their classification into restrictive and obstructive lung disease. You will come across questions on this topic, as it builds a little of a foundation in pneumology, so let's make sure we understand this well. Before we start this video, I want to make sure you are familiar with the different lung volumes, as they are quite relevant to this video. And uh, we have a video on the channel explaining the different lung volumes. And of particular importance uh, here is the residual volume, the vital capacity, and tidal volume. So let's start with restrictive lung disease. These are characterized by a decreased lung compliance. This means it is harder to expand the lungs during inspiration. So it will require more effort, um, so increasing the work of breathing. So essentially, these are any condition that is going to make inflating the lungs harder. So this is usually due to a loss of lung elasticity or a problem with the expansion of the chest wall itself. Now, individuals with restrictive lung diseases um, usually have dyspnea or difficulty breathing, an increased respiratory rate, and a decreased tidal volume. So tidal volume is the amount of air that moves in or out of the lungs with each respiratory cycle. So if you have a decreased tidal volume, you will likely compensate by increasing your respiratory rate. Now, restrictive lung diseases may be divided into intrinsic and extrinsic restrictive lung diseases. And we'll talk about it next. So first, intrinsic restrictive lung diseases. So these are diseases that lead to fibrosis, stiffening, or inflammation of the lung itself. So they are restrictive lung diseases related to a problem in the lung tissue itself. So examples include idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF, sarcoidosis, or tuberculosis and pneumonia. So these are more um, acute, uh, so pneumonia, for example. However, we have uh, chronic conditions like idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So here in this image we have a normal lung and the alveoli, how they are supposed to look like, and then lungs with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So we see in the space between the alveoli you have fibrosis, um, so scar tissue is laid instead of normal lung tissue, and this is usually caused due to chronic damage to the lungs. And so this scar tissue is not going to inflate or uh, expand as well as normal lung tissue, and that is one type of restrictive lung disease. Now, extrinsic restrictive lung diseases are different. So these are conditions that affect tissues and structures outside of the lungs, and this will include some neurological disorders. So for example, someone with severe scoliosis or severe kyphosis, or having both at the same time, so kyphoscoliosis, will have an impaired expansion of the chest wall due to the deformity. So that is a type of extrinsic restrictive lung disease. So the, the lungs will have a hard time expanding since there is a deformity in the chest wall. So this is an example here of uh, severe uh, scoliosis, as we can see here. Now, neuromuscular diseases such as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and multiple sclerosis uh, can be classified as extrinsic uh, restrictive lung diseases as they affect our, um, the ability of our muscles to expand the chest wall, so the diaphragm for example, um, and so we don't get enough inhalation. Also obesity and myasthenia gravis. So obesity because um, there's a lot of weight on top of our chest wall so it makes it hard for our muscles to expand. And myasthenia gravis is another yeah, neuromuscular condition. Now, next let's talk about obstructive lung diseases. So these are diseases that make it difficult to mainly exhale all the air in the lungs. So while in restrictive lung disease it was a uh, difficulty in inhaling air, as the lungs wouldn't expand, obstructive lung diseases is mainly to exhale all that air in the lungs. So you end up with air trapped in the, in the lungs, which makes gas exchange a lot harder. Now, 
Because there is obstruction of the airways, usually due to an inflammation or mucus, the air is exhaled more slowly. So here we have normal lungs, and then lungs with COPD. So COPD stands for chronic obstructive uh, pulmonary disease. And um, you see that there is um, blockage of the bronchioles with mucus. And so when we are inhaling and exhaling, that um, gas exchange is going to be ex uh, impaired. But particularly during exhalation, we get more of a uh, obstruction. The obstruction is worse when we exhale. And so why is that? When we inspire, the airways naturally dilate as the air rushes in, right? And as the lung expands as well. And when we expire, they naturally narrow as air rushes out and the lung deflates. And so if we have an obstruction, as let's say a lot of mucus here in the bronchioles, when we inspire, the bronchioles dilate, and so that obstruction is not as severe. However, when we try and expire, they will collapse, right? They will come together, and that obstruction may fully occlude this airway. And so the air that came in during inspiration might end up trapped inside the alveoli since the, their exit point is blocked. And so that's how you can get air, air tra trapping in the lungs. And so patients with obstructive lung diseases um, may present with a characteristic wheezing. This is uh, especially prominent in asthma. So wheezing is a whistling sound heard on expiration. And so in obstructive lung diseases, there is an increased residual volume, which is that volume of air left inside the lungs after forceful expiration. So after you try to expire all that air, there is still some air left in the lungs. That is the residual volume. So, some of the most common obstructive lung diseases are asthma, that is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the bronchial mucosa that causes bronchial hyperresponsiveness um, and constriction of the airways. So, here in this image, uh, we have normal airway. Then uh, an airway when we're having asthma exacerbations. So, and we can see how much obstruction there is, uh, as well as the mucus, and how much harder it is for air to flow through. Next, we have uh, COPD. Uh, so this is an umbrella term that encompasses emphysema and chronic bronchitis. So emphysema is an abnormal permanent enlargement of the alveoli with rupture of the alveolar walls forming large sacs for gas exchange instead of multiple small sacs. So this redu reduces the surface area for gas exchange and so makes it much uh, worse. It also leads to alveolar coll collapse. Uh, next we have chronic bronchitis, which is uh, inflammation or swelling uh, of the bronchial tubes. These tubes are the airways that carry air to and from the air sacs in our lungs. And the irritation of the tubes causes mucus to build up, and so leading to obstruction. Next, we have cystic fibrosis, which is a genetic disorder that leads to the production of a thick and sticky mucus that accumulates in the airways, leading to obstruction and also infection. We have a video explaining cystic fibrosis on the channel, so feel free to check that out. Another thing we have to talk about is the FEV1 to FVC ratio. So FEV1 is the forced expiratory volume in one second, meaning is the total amount of air you can expire from your lungs in one second, and the forced vital capacity is the FVC, and that is the total amount of air that you can inspire and expire from your lungs. So normally this ratio is about around 80% and above, uh, but in obstructive lung disease, we will have a fall in that ratio. And that's because we cannot expire air as easily since we have that obstruction. So this will fall to around 70% and lower. So if we have here uh, different uh, plots, so we have from the normal lungs, or uh, lungs with restricted diseases and obstructed diseases here. So we have the total volume exhaled, right? 
And we can see that in one second, in a normal lung, uh, the total amount of uh, air exhaled is almost the fourth vital capacity, or the total amount of air in the lungs, right? And this is normal. We have uh, quite a good ratio there. Now, with restrictive disease, this ratio is still quite the same, right? Uh, in one second, you expire most of that air since the first vital capacity is now here. So the shape of the curve is pretty similar to the normal lungs. And that is because we cannot inspire that much air in restricted disease. However, there's not that, many, that much of a problem with expiring it. So the first expiratory volume to FVC ratio it doesn't change that much in restricted disease. But now in obstructive disease, we can see that this curve is way different. So in one second time, out of the total volume of air, around half here in this, in this diagram has been expired in one second only. And then the rest is going to be expired quite slowly until you expire all the air. And that is a characteristic of obstructive lung diseases having a reduced FEV1 by FVC ratio. Okay, so finally, let's look at something called flow volume loops. So the flow volume loop is a plot of inspiratory and expiratory flow. So on the y-axis, so we have expiration there and inspiration here. Uh, against volume, so volume of air on the x-axis. Um, so that's during the performance of a maximally forced inspiratory and expiratory maneuvers. So, for example, we ask the patient, let's have a look at the normal line. So starting here, we ask the patient to inspire, maximally inspire, and we, have, and we plot the flow, so an inspiration. So it's inspiring up to there, so you see the volume of air inside the lungs has increased from around 2 to all the way to 6. And then a forceful expiration. So they will expire, and this measures the flow of expiration, and then slowly comes down. So in restrictive disease first, we see that the flow in inspiration and expiration is much lower, so the curve is much uh, smaller. And also the amount of air going inside the lungs uh, reduces. And we can see here that the curve starts more to the right, meaning there is less volume in the lungs at, at start, so when after forceful expiration. So there's uh, less residual volume, but that is because there is less expansion of the lungs in general. So here, forced inspiration, then forced expiration. And we can see that the shape of the curve is quite similar to that of the normal curve. It's kind of just a replica of the normal curve, just smaller, and shifted a little bit to the right. That is restrictive disease. Now, in obstructive disease, we can see a clear difference there in shape. So here is expiration, right? And this refers uh, back to that FEV1 by FVC ratio. So we can see that expiration, uh, the flow, there's much less flow, right? So flow goes up to here and then it's slowly expiring the, the rest of the air in the lungs. So it, it shows a, a hard time expiring air. So we have that entrapment of air in the lungs and obstruction. And we can also see that uh, inspiration is reduced, but not necessarily as reduced as we see in restrictive, because the problem in obstructive is mainly expiring air. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more.